Have you ever had this experience? You don't have any problem locking in your backside 50-50 when you are approaching an obstacle at an angle. But as soon as you try it at a smaller angle, all of a sudden something snaps and you can't lock in anymore. But why? I mean, think about it. Isn't that a little odd? According to the physics, that the bigger the approach angle is, which requires more work, the easier it becomes to lock in? Why? When something seems going against the nature of the physics, that would probably mean that we are missing something. And that could be the line of sight. In this episode, we will try to understand the impact of the line of sight on backside 50-50s. You're watching Why the Trek, and today we are going to study a trek scientifically. To start off, let's just clarify what it takes to do this prime as premises. Your shoulders and your board should be parallel to the obstacle by the time you grind. And your board should be directly under your feet. In fact, the line of sight has a lot of impact on these factors. Before talking about where you should look at, let's imagine where you tend to look at in this trick. Unlike frontside 50-50s, where it's easier to keep your eyes on the obstacle the whole time, it's not exactly easy to keep on looking at the same spot in backside 50-50s. With your shoulders blocking your view, your line of sight tend to move too far forward. Now, you may think it's just a trivial thing, and the line of sight has nothing to do with the trick itself. But in fact, according to the ergonomics and the physics, the line of sight can be a major cause of common mistakes. So let's see what the line of sight does one by one. Number one, the line of sight affects the angle of shoulders. A human body tries to face the same direction as its face is. In other words, if your face is looking at a certain direction, your body opens up to the same direction too. For example, if your face is looking forward when you get on the ledge, your body follows the line of sight and tries to face forward too. And this eventually rotates your board. I believe this is one of the major reasons why you end up locking in on the belly of your board. Number 2. The line of sight affects the location of your board. Where you look at is generally where you try to lock in, which affects the location of your board. Ideally, your board should stay under you as you get on the ledge. Whereas, if you're looking at somewhere farther than you should, although your mind is already at the place that you're looking at, the center of mass of your body is far behind and you can't reach there. And the only thing you can do is to extend your front foot to reach that place. This may send your board too far forward while leaving your body behind. As a result, if you do this, you might either wind up locking in in the wheelie position or completely miss the ledge. With that said, why is it easier to lock in with a bigger angle? Now, it doesn't mean that you should approach obstacles at an angle if you already know the basics. But especially if you're having a hard time locking in, analyzing its science might help you better understand the trick itself. Simply put, approaching at an angle helps you do two things. Number one, it helps you keep your board under you. When you approach an obstacle at an angle, you can keep your eyes on it the whole time. It also gives you a better sense of distance between you and the obstacle, which makes it easier for you to wait until the obstacle gets close enough. And after popping, with the line of sight going straight down, all you have to do is to bring your board under your feet. And after having your board under your feet, you'd probably not be feeling any necessity to move your board any farther. And obviously, by being able to keep your board under your feet, you can avoid locking in, in the wheelie position, or missing the ledge. Number 2. It helps you align your shoulders with the ledge. Imagine you are looking at a certain part of a moving object, like a train, while standing still. Then, if you try to keep on looking at the same spot, it's not just your eyes that you move, but it's your entire face, isn't it? A similar thing happens in backside 50-50s. With a big angle, it is easier to keep on looking at the same spot, even when you get on the ledge. As you start rotating your shoulders and get on the ledge, your line of sight, face and shoulders follow the rotation of your what you're looking at. Let me put it this way, if it is a ledge that rotates, 
In order to keep on looking at the same place, you have to tilt your head and shoulders in the same direction. Just like this, looking at the same place turns your face and shoulders without even thinking about it. And if you look away somewhere, that's the time the rotation of your body stops. So keep on looking at the same spot until your body goes parallel to the ledge. So if you're having a hard time locking in, why don't you practice Axel's toes first? Come in with a big angle, nice and slowly, and gradually start grinding when you get used to it. And that's all for this episode. If you're still watching, just do me a favor please. When you leave a comment, please consider addressing some scientific reasons so that we can collectively grow the skateboarding related knowledge. Let's make a difference together. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, as always, until next time.